because I've put the aluminium head on, <coughs> I now have a composite system of aluminium, uh, copper, I think there's a brass pipe there as well, and uh, cast iron. So uh, I used to run uh, a zinc anode in the in the radiator, but I've now changed that to a magnesium um, anode. That's this one here. It's a, off a water heater, um, and I hang that inside the top of the radiator and just drop it down onto the onto the copper inside there. And it's held in place by the by the copper wire, so just in the the overflow. Um, that seems to uh, be the easiest place to put it, and of course the easiest place to to check its condition. So it just sits in there; it's not in the way of anything. The radiator cap goes on there and seals fine. Um, the coolant I put in is a um, a classic vehicle coolant. Just happens to be a Penrite um, product. I run that in all my uh, classic vehicles. Um, so that's uh, not just straight water, so it's a proper coolant and then the anode and hopefully that will um, help um, um, preserve the aluminium head. So uh, anyway, that's what I use. Hopefully that uh, um, certainly won't cause a problem and Hopefully it'll do its job. Again. Although the car's pulled apart yet again, uh, when I had it running, the, um, the head showed uh, a significant improvement in, in its performance. The, uh, just to describe it, I did have a tried to do a video when I was driving it, but my GoPro seemed to uh, have a bit of problem operating with the coils because it was up. I was controlling it through my mobile phone. Anyway, cut a long story short. The, the feeling is that the, the car is it, it appears much lighter when it's going up a hill, which means obviously it's got um, much uh, stronger pulling power. Don't have to use much throttle. Um, the car seems to run cooler than it used to, so um, that seems to uh, confirm the, the benefits of, of this particular head, not only in terms of performance but in terms of cooling. The um, reason it's apart, I only used it locally, just running around uh, the local streets, but um, I started to experience problems, two problems. One is the fan was starting to scream and that's because the uh, the bush was giving out and in fact has given out. Um, and the, um, the link I put on to operate the accelerator foot pedal from the car, which goes back that way, and the hand throttle, which goes around that way, around behind the intake manifold, um, they were sort of not, not operating in sync. And what happened was that the, the throttle lever, which is actually this one, see where I've brazed the top in, the, uh, uh, the shaft and the lever decided to part ways. Now, um, not a good good show. So I, I just found a, a spare carburetor, which is the one that's on there now. Uh, just dropped it on the car and and removed the hand throttle, um, so I wouldn't have the same problem with with this throttle lever. Um, that didn't go too well either, uh, mainly because. Without the hand throttle, it makes it harder to start when the engine's cold. You've got to hold the throttle open a bit, which with a foot throttle um, is not that easy unless you've got someone in the car or you put something on the uh, on the pedal. Um, then you've got to wait for the engine to warm up before you can actually 
um, remove whatever obstacle you've put in the way of the throttle. Uh, so um, that made it harder to, to operate and in addition to that I've had enormous trouble getting this what, the mixture right on this particular carburetor. So, oh and one other problem. In driving around locally I developed a case of the front, front wheel wobbles which uh, anyone that's driven a T would know um, it's quite an experience when, you, when you're driving usually at low speeds and uh, your front wheels start to wobble backwards and forwards and obviously the steering wheel dances around in your hands so um, I've tightened up the front front links they weren't too bad but the problem I had was the uh, the bottom steering uh, shaft bracket which goes on the end of the steering shaft there um, the bush was worn not only worn terribly worn and uh, I've just pulled that out to uh, to rebush it um, I've also pulled the radiator out so I could get at the, the fan easier a lot easier to get the, uh, the fan pulley out if you don't have the radiator in the way. So, the car is in pieces. I'm now rebushing the, the fan pulley. I'm rebushing the, the steering shaft bracket. And I'm redesigning the hand throttle, foot throttle um, link and the way they operate together. So instead of what was happening was that the hand throttle was tending to pull this up and eventually a part of ways. So I've got to redesign that. I've got a few ideas in mind. I've had a look at the internet. There's a few few good suggestions there. Um, so uh, I'm just at the moment I'm working on the hand throttle mechanism I'm rebuilding my original carburetor putting uh, um, new spray seats and, and the, um, the needle and the, the butterflies doing all of that cleaning out the passengers passages so I'm doing all that so I'll put my original carby back on once it's rebuilt uh, but in the meantime, I'll use this this while it's on the car to redesign my combined linkages. Um, I want to be able to use the hand throttle, not necessarily for driving, but certainly for starting, so I can give the car some throttle to uh, to warm it up, and then gradually release the uh, uh, the throttle as the engine warms. And to have the accelerator, of course, that operates independent of that. So that's why the car's back in pieces. Um, hopefully, this won't take too long, and I'll get it back on the road. And I'll attempt to uh, fix my problem with the GoPro and um, take some uh, shots when I'm driving it. Now the two worn bushing uh, problems I had with the with the T was first of all the uh, fan hub uh, pulley, the bushes in here, these ones. There are two of them, one each side. I'll just pull that out. One that side, one this side. Now these are the the new ones I've I've pressed in. The original ones are these. The um, way to get these out, as I found out, was to get a um, thread tap of sufficient size. The only one I had, unfortunately, was a, a 5.8 uh, Whitworth. It was enough. Screw that in. Basically, screw it in one end. And then when you've got it in far enough, turn it around and then tap it out with a, a small drift. They come out very easily. 
Uh, what I found when I got them out, and I don't know whether they can be seen, but these are the original Ford bushes. It's got the Ford script. Same one there. The Ford script. Now, I suppose I should send them back to Ford and say they didn't last, but I guess uh, um, yeah, 99 years is uh, not, not bad to have them in place. So they definitely needed uh, replacing, they were sloppy. So I've um, done that, that's okay. I um, also bought a new uh, shaft here, so that now fits nicely in there. The other problem I had was with the, the oil plug. My plug was actually very hard to get out and it's very, very worn. Once again, it's uh, lasted just on a hundred years. I've got a new one of those, just not here at the moment. Um, just in the house, so I'll put that back in and then I'll reassemble that. The other problem I had with the fan pulley was the actual uh, mount that, that holds it, which is this one. Now, the way this goes together, that goes in there, bolts on, that spins, and this is the, the actual uh, supporting piece, and this is the one you adjust. So it screws into the motor, and then there's a an adjustment screw there which actually raises this and tensions the belt. Now the problem I have with this was that the whole um, mount, once it was tightened up, was moving. You can probably see it moving in and out there. Um, it was moving even though this um, bolt was tightened up. And I guess once again over the years the, uh, the face on this side had worn um, and that meant that even though this was tightened up the, um, the bracket was just bouncing around like that. So when you, you add that to the uh, where in the pulley it was a fair amount of slop in the, uh, in the fan. So what I've done at this stage, if I put a sufficiently thick wash, and I've just got a copper one there for the moment, and put it in there, it enables this to be tightened up um, against the, the flange on the uh, timing cover case, and uh, it won't move. So with those two uh, improvements and the new shaft, That'll take all the slop out of the, the fan. Now, the other major bush I had um, was the one for the steering. Now, this is a steering bracket that mounts on the, um, the frame of the front of the car. Steering shaft comes down from the steering wheel, goes through here. Now, there's only a bush at one end on this. This end is the, um, is the size of the actual shaft and the other end is the bush. Now, this is the bush I, I knocked out. Once again, the easy way to get them out is with a, um, um, a tap, a thread tap. You need something about 7 8 to get uh, into that bush. I didn't have one that size. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to knock it out from the rear. Uh, you can get a, a drift down in there just by applying a little bit of heat to this and then tapping that out. So that came out. Once again, new bush, that's gone back in. Um, so uh, that should take the um, slop I was experiencing out the end of the, the shaft. So in an exaggerated form it was moving backwards and forwards like that in the bush. 
So that was providing the opportunity for the, the whole steering system to want, you know, to start to move and to wobble certainly at low speed. Um, so that has now been replaced. And what I've also done, and I don't have that this here in the garage at the moment, is a new uh, pitman arm to go off the end. So it mounts on the end of the shaft, goes straight down onto the steering uh, links. And it has a ball at the end. Um, a ball at the end of the shaft. Just look here. Uh, a round ball which goes into a uh, one of the links with a brass cap over it. Now the ball on my Pipman arm, once again after 99 years, is not in pristine condition. So I've got a new Pipman arm, so that will take any uh, movement out of the um, Pipman arm ball against the cap. So with those um, improvements, that will take hopefully the uh, a shimmy out of the uh, um, uh, front wheels at low speed and this will take the screeching out of the fan belt. Um, yet to put them on, I've just uh, um, got them in the workshop, I've now got to uh, got a new seal for this. Um, <coughs> I was waiting on the new uh, oil plug so uh, I can actually assemble and then fill this with oil. This is actually oil filled, not greased. And the oil goes up through the shaft and out the hole there, both sides of course. And that, uh, that helps oil the, uh, the pulley. So that should uh, go very well when I've got it back on. I'm just installing the bottom steering arm bracket. The new bush is in there. I had to actually ream the bush to get it to fit the shaft. So um, that took a little bit of time, but it's back in. I haven't tightened anything up yet. Um, I've got to uh, tighten the... You can just see that a bit dark in there. Tighten the nuts through the frame, um, so I've got to do that yet, and I've got to. Uh, once I've done that, this is a new Pitman arm I've got down the bottom here. Um, I've got to fit that. So the the old one was worn on the ball on the bottom of the Pitman arm, so I've actually now got to. Uh, fit the new Pitman arm and then um, adjust the, the cap. So um, I've probably got to, got to put a few spaces in there to, to get the cap out to fit the ball. So I've still got to do that, but it's getting close to having the, the steering back in place. Now this is my original carburetor which I'm uh, just rebuilding. I've cleaned the passages out, just finished plugging those with brass uh, rods, they're all done. The uh, got a new uh, seat to put in the bottom here. Couldn't get a new uh, needle, so I've refaced that, that should be fine. And the, the actual butterflies I've got uh, two new brass ones to put in. So um, that which one I've got there? Uh, that's what I've got to do at the moment. <clears throat> but what I've also been working on is the throttle linkage. Now I have a um, an accelerator pedal which comes across from this direction from the cab and the hand throttle comes around the inlet manifold which is obviously sits in here um, from the steering column here around 
and onto the link. Now, what I'm using is a um, a um, um, linkage that um, I saw on uh, the uh, um, the American forum. It's actually a New Zealand um, uh, member who uh, who designed this, and what it relies on is a uh, something coming around the because it was a right hand being New Zealand comes around the inlet manifold, hooks on here, and actually goes into a tube, and which means that when you push the hand throttle, it can activate the, the, um, the lever, and when the accelerator is pulled, the tube runs down the shaft, and means that the hand throttle is not affected. Now, <clears throat> I have a high volume um, in that manifold on this, so I've actually had to reshape the um, linkage from the hand throttle. I've, uh, it's taken me three attempts to get it right. That was the first one. That was the second one. Not a lot of difference in them, but it's the problem was getting around the the wider uh, manifold, and then finally I've got this one, which goes around quite a long way. In terms of how it connects up to the throttle, what I've done is I've got a uh, a bolt that I've machined down and it will go through um, that. It has the a ball which I've actually I'm going to cut this down a lot more. The ball will fit in the top which then links with the foot throttle. So I'll just take that off for the moment. And the plate I put on the top there, that. and that goes through that, that goes into that, and then of course that is bolted on there, not tight, because it's got a, a shaft and that actually has to move. Um, so what I've got is a somewhere on the table here. Oh, I did have, yeah, um, one of these lock nuts to go on there, and you can picture this. It's a bit hard to take a photo on the car because of um, where it is. So if you can imagine that is actually flush. This comes around the um, inlet manifold when it's pushed down. It actually operates the throttle. Now there's no return spring on this of course, but on the foot throttle there is a return spring. So it relies on the foot throttle spring to push it back. Now if I just hold this, pretending the, the hand throttle is held in position in its idle position, when the foot throttle is pressed, it pulls around and doesn't move the hand throttle goes like that. So it's taken a while to get all of that right. That was the first prototype. Didn't work because it was in line with the where the pin would normally sit, which meant it couldn't go around the manifold. So I've had to do an offset. And you can probably see 
is self sent from the center line and that enables it to go round and operate around the manifold. Um, probably some minor adjustments to make still um, because I don't know where the, the idle point will be and the way I'll overcome that is that when I've got the right idle I'll put this in and adjust the length of the straight section so what I can do is just um, grind a little, little bit off the end because what I want to be able to do is to um, have the hand throttle so it actually needs to be pulled down a fraction before it engages. So what this does, it slides down that pipe and engages the, the stop at the end. So by adjusting the length of, the, of this section here, um, I'll adjust it so when it's on, on idle, the hand throttle just needs to move down a little bit before it engages. That means I've got some room to play around with the idle. Otherwise, I'll end up with a situation where um, this is pushing against the, uh, the lever and I can't properly adjust the idle. Anyway, that's what I've got. Still got a bit of work to do on that. And I still have, obviously, some work to do on reassembling this carburetor. Uh, before I can put it back on. So that's the mechanism. The idea is that this will be able to spin and also this because it has a, a shaft not a thread all the way up will also be able to rotate within the, the throttle lever. So hopefully that will work um, and everything will stay in alignment. Now I've put it all in place. I'll just give a demonstration, hopefully, of how this works. So I'll just go into the cab. And first thing I'll do is operate the uh, hand lever. There's the hand lever operating. So that gives me the opportunity to um, increase the idle for starting. So I'll pull that back. And now I'll operate the accelerator pedal. And the hand lever is not affected by it just moves backwards and forwards. And once again, hand lever. And accelerator. So, the system works. All I need to do is uh, make final adjustments when I've got the motor all connected up so uh, the system works there's no uh, conflict between the operation of either hand lever or accelerator so that's working well um, I was just going to put all this back together but what I've decided is that I'm now actually going to replace the fuel line while I'm uh, playing with the carburetor I have a a rubber fuel line, had that for many years. Um, I'm replacing that with a um, a steel line. So uh, um, obviously it's a lot easier to do if you don't have the body on the chassis. So it means getting under and and um, laying the pipe properly. So I'll do that. So I've then got a um, a nice clean fuel line to the carburetor. So one less problem to uh, encounter and then I'll start assembling the motor.